Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to the Honey Optics YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the color on your camera. Getting the colors in your image to look right is crucial to getting a good looking image out of your camera. And this video will build upon what we learned in our previous video about how to set proper exposure. To understand what's happening with the color, I'm going to be bringing the video into OBS on my computer using the camera's built-in NDI feature. And then we'll be using a Vectorscope plugin in OBS to see what's going on with our color in more detail. If you're not familiar with a Vectorscope, it measures the color or chroma content in your image. It's essentially a circle, and you can see these markers around the circle, R for red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. It's essentially a color wheel. If I input a completely red image, you can see a dot in the little red box by the R. That's completely 100% saturated perfect red. If I desaturate the red, the dot will move back towards the center, but still on a line from the center to the red marker. Both black and white will be in the middle, representing no color. So with this grayscale gradient, we only get a dot in the middle because there is no color in this image. The vector scope only measures color and the saturation of the color. If I input color bars, you can see that we get a dot in each of the boxes, red, magenta, blue, and so forth, and a dot in the middle for the black and white bars. So if we look at the image from the camera, it's showing us a representation of the colors that are in our image. Now that we understand what the vector scope is showing us, let's take a look at the color settings on the camera and see what they do to the image on the vector scope and how we can then use that to get the right colors out of our camera. First, in a browser, I'm going to enter the IP address of the camera and log in with the username and password admin and admin. This brings me to an interface that I can use to control the camera. I'm going to zoom in on this spider checker color chart so we can see what happens to the different colors as we adjust the camera. Let me pause for a second. This is really important. When you are adjusting the color from your camera, you want to make sure whatever you are looking at is in the lighting you're going to be using. Your lighting conditions have a huge impact on the colors that your camera sees. Don't expect to adjust your color in one room, then move the camera to a different room with different lights and different levels of ambient light, and have it look the same. You need to adjust your color settings in the lighting that you'll be using. So that's why I have this color chart on stage in my front wash lighting. Because ultimately, we want colors to look right, and especially skin tones to look right when they are under my front wash lighting. In this drop down, I'm going to switch from PTZ, which operates the pan and tilt of the camera, to OSD, which brings up the menu and lets us navigate through it. And we'll go into the color menu. The camera will come in auto color mode, but there are several modes to choose from. Indoor, outdoor, one push, which lets us set a white balance point manually, manual, and variable. First, let's look at one push, since besides auto, this is probably the most common and quickest way to get something looking right from your camera. To perform a proper white balance on your camera, you'll need to put something that is white in your shot to completely fill the frame. And you want this to be completely in your front wash or key lighting. Be sure and turn off any special effects lighting that has color in it. This doesn't have to be in focus, but you need to be sure that it's not overexposed or underexposed. So you may want to quickly look at it on your waveform monitor before you do the white balance. You'll notice right now, before I do the white balance, that the dot in the center of our vector scope is a bit off center. What the white balance will hopefully do is get that moved back to the center so the white is actually white. To actually perform the white balance, click the enter button while you're on the one push option. And now our white dot is in the center of the vector scope. Let's take away the white card and go back to our color checker and take a look at what these other options under one push do. Red green tuning, going positive pushes the whole image towards red and negative pushes it towards green, but actually it's really more towards cyan. And the same for blue green tuning, going positive pushes towards blue and going negative actually pushes towards yellow. Increasing saturation pushes everything out from the center, and obviously reducing it brings them in closer to the center. 
When adjusting the saturation, you'll notice on the vector scope that there is a second set of markers for each color, and these are the 75% markers that originated from broadcast standards that required saturation to be below 75% to be what's called broadcast safe. When the image starts to get oversaturated, just like our brightness can start to clip, you can also potentially start to lose detail when the color oversaturates. So it is a good generalization to keep things below these 75% markers. Generally, you can set saturation by your eye, try and make it look natural. I find with these cameras under decent lighting, I'm usually setting the saturation to about 120% for a vibrant but natural look. We'll look at saturation a bit more in our next video when we look at color matching several cameras in a multi-camera setup. Now hue is a really interesting one. Even though the white balance operation centered the white in the middle, the hue is going to rotate the whole thing. So increasing the value will rotate clockwise, bringing reds closer to magenta and blues towards cyan and so forth. You can see that our red square is starting to look magenta and it's moved clockwise on the vector scope. So even though you've white balanced your camera, if your hue setting is off, your colors will still look wrong. So using something like this color chart, you can make sure your colors are lining up properly. But really, you can point your camera at just about anything. I prefer something red and line up the colors to the right position on your vector scope, and you should be in the ballpark. Finally, let's talk about skin tones. This square here on the color chart represents skin tone. I've got a scene here in OBS that masks off everything except that square. It's just a PNG file filled with black and a transparent square cutout that lets the camera image through. You could do this with an actual person. You don't need a color chart. Just zoom in on their face and mask off everything else with black. It may not look as clean on your vector scope, but you'll still be able to make out the skin tone. This line here on the vector scope is the skin tone line. So for skin to look natural and the correct color, it needs to fall on this line. And this applies to any ethnicity. It may be a different saturation level, but it will still fall on this line. Use the hue adjustment to get this as close to being on the line as possible. You could also use the tuning values to try and tweak it exactly to the line. At this point, you should have a great looking image coming from your camera. In our next video, we're gonna look at color matching two cameras in a multi-camera environment where you are switching between multiple cameras and you want them to look the same. Until next time, bye.